On the subject of the Clooney op-ed yesterday, there's reporting out today that the White House actually had a heads up. It hit, it hit Wednesday morning that they had a heads up on Tuesday. He was going to do it. And they unleashed all their power to try to stop it, including dispatching Jeffrey Katzenberg, you know, movie mogul in Hollywood, who's chairing, co-chairing the Biden campaign to try to stop him from doing it. Clooney does an answer to Jeffrey Katzenberg and refused to stop. By the way, not for nothing, but Jeffrey Katzenberg told me personally in 2016 he would spend any amount to get Hillary Clinton elected. We all saw how that worked out. So I know they're all drunk on their own perceived power. It's not as great as they think it is. But what do you think about this, you know, the reports out today that he ran it by Obama, that Obama had no objection. And I think you and I both know if Obama wanted to stop it, he could have. And there's probably a greater likelihood than not that he may have even orchestrated it. So Obama seems to want Biden gone. I think that's why he shepherded him off the stage with the arm at the fundraiser. It's why all of his guys, Axelrod, yeah. Begala, uh, Favreau, and more of that pod saved him. They're all out there taking shots at Biden. They, I don't think they'd all be doing that if, if Obama were firmly in the Biden camp. So does he still have any power? Look, I think your monologue was brilliant on this subject, how you laid it out. People should go back and, and listen to it. Um, uh, but you're exactly right. Obama could have stopped this. Now, whether or not he was pushing it and approving it is one thing, but he absolutely could have stopped it. He didn't stop it. And all of his lieutenants are piling on. So I think it's a free for all from uh, Team Obama. They recognize that Joe uh, was not really the best person to put forward. He's Joe is ruining their brand. Uh, I think it's a big problem for them. But I live in Los Angeles. I'm here in Los Angeles now. And I have to tell you, you know, as much as I can't stand George Clooney's politics, uh, he's touching on something that every progressive, every far lefty in Los Angeles is saying, there's chaos in LA. They don't want Joe Biden, um, but they these people are not political masters. They don't understand the process. So they think, oh, let's just switch them. When they learn, oh wait, there was a Democrat process. He's the nominee. You can't really switch it without opening it up. Then they're like, oh no, this is terrible. The non-political people are the ones that say, oh, well, let's just put in Michelle Obama or let's put in somebody that we think can beat Trump. But that's incredibly complicated. You can't just do that. And when the non-political people in Los Angeles learn that, they just say, oh, wow, well, we're going to lose. And so they're <laughs> not giving as much. They're not going to vote. I'm telling you, it's going to be a, a bloodbath, if we can use that term, uh, yeah. in an election. And uh, not only is is Joe Biden going to lose, but I think a lot of Democrats aren't going to get the support because people aren't going to come out to the polls. They're not that excited. Let me tell you something. Clooney's going to win either way because he's partners with Randy Gerber, Cindy Crawford's husband, and he's an entrepreneur on that liquor. Um, you know, what's it? Yeah. you know the one at Casamigos. And um, yeah. I think they sold part of it, but they must still have some of it because Cindy Crawford was just out there pushing the Casamigos version of it. So the, as the liquor sales go up, <laughs> along with the despondency, Clooney wins either way. But I do want to show you this. Um, the crew over at Morning Joe, which, you know, depending on the day they're with or for against, you know, Joe Biden, they were 100 percent in his pocket. And then they saw what we saw. And Joe Scarborough had a moment of honesty, like he can't do it. Holy crap. And now within, <laughs> you know, a couple of days, he went back to never mind. Never mind. I'm a bootlicker. That's where I'm most comfortable. Yeah. And this is what they were saying about the Obama thing today. My kids again. This but, wasn't George Clooney. But but the, well, the, what do you mean? It that, just wasn't. Come on. What? Well, who do you think it was? <laughs> Matt Damon. It was not Matt Damon. Who do you think it was? It wasn't Julia Roberts either. Who do you think it was? Um, you can say the name. You uh, won't melt. It's not Voldemort. <laughs> Did, are you saying you think Barack Obama put him up to this? I I think that Barack Obama has a lot of influence. And, I, there were two and, and, people and, in this picture, and oh. one has had a presidency that was absolutely, uh, uh, undeniably okay. historic. Yeah. Well, I think you have two people that had mm -hmm. extraordinarily oh, historic Oh, I'm sorry. Presences. Historic in terms of uh, uh, legislative accomplishments. The Biden campaign and many Democratic officials do believe that Barack Obama uh, is is quietly uh, working behind the scenes 
uh, to orchestrate this. Joe Biden is deeply resentful of, of his treatment under uh, not only the Obama staff, but also the way he was pushed aside for Hillary Clinton. Well, I think that's true, Rick. Do, don't you? Pass the popcorn. I'm here all day for this. I've been waking <laughs> up and watching Morning Joe, I have to admit, because it is juicy and brilliant. They don't know what to do. There's a total meltdown. Every guest is shooting each other. They admit constantly, I'm getting texts challenging me what I'm saying. Uh, they're not used to having dissenting views, Megan. They're not used yeah. to having media that ask tough questions. This is a party that has literally pushed propaganda and discipline amongst everyone, and they don't like dissenting views. And that's why they've been so easy, easily convinced that they can crush uh, conservative views on social media and cancel people because they do it all the time in their own party and nobody pushes back. So yeah. uh, I love to watch what's happening right now. I'm a huge Morning Joe fan. I'm watching every <laughs> single episode because they made this bed and I want to watch them sleep in it. Yes, roll around, feel the goodness. We'll all watch. It's like a, the weirdest porno ever. <laughs> it was Lennon who said, give me four years to teach the children and the seed I have sown will never be uprooted. Well, in the last four years, math and reading skills are on the decline. And let's not forget all the woke indoctrination. Plus inflation is making things harder than ever, but there is some good news. And that's why I wanna tell you about Freedom Project Academy. Freedom Project Academy was built on Judeo-Christian values and classical curriculum, love that. Students read full books, they write in cursive, they study the full scope of history, they graduate with knowledge years above their public school peers. They have payment plans, so you don't need to choose between paying the mortgage and ensuring your kids get a decent education. I could have used these folks when we pulled our kids from the woke, annoying private schools in New York. So you can save 10% right now on tuition when you enroll at freedomforschool.com. That's freedomforschool.com. Check out their fully accredited courses, you can preview classes, payment plans, and request a free information packet today. Enrollment ends soon, so please don't wait. Take back your child's education at Freedom Project Academy, freedomforschool.com. That's freedomforschool.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.